Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at an example that's part of ESP Helper, and it's one of two relay control programs. So I have version one and version two, and they're basically the same thing. The only real difference functionally between the two of them is that V2 includes the ability to have an onboard button or switch. And basically it just lets you control the relay module from the ESP itself without having to use MQTT. So that's really the only difference. They both support MQTT, but V2 also has a button as a way to control it. So we're actually not going to build this module today. I'm going to leave that for another video, but it's actually a pretty simple build. It's basically just an ESP01 module, a regular relay module that I got off of eBay, an AC to DC converter, which I also got on eBay, but you can also take apart old uh, phone chargers and whatnot and have a similar module inside that you can just pull out of those. And then I also have a 5 volt to 3 volt uh, converter here and a button and an extra capacitor just to filter everything out. And that's basically it. The only other thing I have is this old extension cord, this two prong extension cord that I sacrificed as my AC wire and plug. So we're not going to build this today, but I will be putting out a video shortly that does go through how to build this and have schematics. So don't worry about that. But for today, let's go ahead and take a look at this code over here. And so at the top, you'll see I'm including ESP helper as all of these examples require it. We include that. And then I have two topics here. I have a definition for topic and a definition for status. And status is basically a topic that is just purely for the relay module for this unit to report back whatever it is currently doing. So this basically gives us a form of a closed loop control because we can tell it, we can post a message, a one or a zero to our topic here. And then if status does not update with that one or zero, we know that the relay module must not have gotten the information and therefore maybe we'll send that message again. So status topic is basically, it's just that it's just for the module to update MQTT with the current status. So then we also have, if you've been following along with my ESP helper videos, the regular network host name and OTA password. And these are just things for setting up OTA. And then we have some pin definitions here. So I have my relay pin is on pin three, which technically is the RX pin on the ESP. And blink pin is the TX or the LED on the ESP01 module. And then I also have my button pin defined here for pin zero. So these are the three pins that you'll need. You can change them if you want, but I've had good luck working with these three pins. So then you'll see down here, this is basically a repetition of the information up here, but I like to both have my definitions, my macros up at the top, and then I like to put them into variables just so that when it goes to compile, the compiler has types for everything. Because if you, if you just use definitions and you drop that into various places, it can mess you up. Uh, I've run into more than one problem where I just had a definition up here, a macro, and I used it somewhere in my code and it screwed it up. So forgive me if this seems redundant, but that's the way that I do it. So coming down here, we, we, have, a ver we have a few variables here. And we have current state, which this just keeps track of the current state of the relay. So whether it's on or off, we have a Boolean to help us detect and mark when we've detected a rising edge, when we push the button. And then we have a last button state, which it helps in a, us detecting that rising edge because it basically detects what the last button state was compared to the current button state. So if it previously was off and is now on or pressed, 
we know that that's a rising edge and we should do something with it. So then we just have the basic ESP helper set up. So if you, if this is all looking kind of foreign to you, go and check out my intro video for ESP helper and it will explain most of these lines. But basically we're setting up ESP helper, enabling OTA updates, enabling the heartbeat, adding subscri subscriptions and starting it. And beyond that, that's basically all that's happening with ESP helper in this program. That's all we really have to worry about is just those few lines of setup and now we're past it. So moving on, we have the button we set as an input and our relay we set as an output. And just for good measure, I make sure to write the low, turn it off initially. So now we're inside of loop and loop is also not too complicated. So up at the top, we check to make sure that we have a full connection. So that's both Wi-Fi and MQTT. And as long as we have a full connection, we're going to go ahead and read the state of our button. And remember, this button is connected via a pull up resistor, which means that when we push it, it actually goes low. So low is pressed and high is unpressed. So we check to see if the button is basically if it's pressed and if it previously was not pressed. And if that's the case, then we're going to go ahead and delay 50 milliseconds. And this is basically a poor man's debounce. We're just going to, we detected that it got pressed, but we're not sure that it was actually pressed yet. So we're going to wait 50 more milliseconds and just let any jitter in the system go, go away. And then we'll check our button again. And because we already know that it was previously unpressed, we don't need to check for last button state again. I'm just going to go ahead and read the pin. And if it's low, that means that it's still being pressed and we can continue here and set our last button state to low, which again, remember that means pressed and our rising edge to true, because this means that we have pushed the button. So I'm going to skip over this just for a moment. And so now we come down to this if statement that asks if rising edge is true. So if rising edge is true, which is only set here, we're going to set our state to the opposite of current state. So whatever current state is in, it's going to invert that. So if the relay was on, it's going to turn it off and vice versa. And that happens down here in set state. So set state just basically checks to make sure that the new state whatever we're passing in is not the same as the current state because I don't want to redundantly send things to the status topic if I don't have to. And as long as they're different, we're going to set current state to new state. And then we're going to publish to the MQTT status topic to whatever we're going to change to. So if we're turning on, we'll publish a one. And if we're turning off, we'll publish a zero. And then we're actually going to do that. We're going to turn the relay on or off using digital write. So that's all there really is to set state. Now I did skip over this if else if statement here. And this basically just, if the button is not pressed and previously was pressed, then set the last button state to high. So not pressed and reset the rising edge flag. So that's basically it. The last little bit here is just the callback, which just looks for a message on the relay topic and sets the state of the relay if it gets a message on that topic. So that's really all that's happening in this program. It's pretty simple, pretty self-contained, and it works really well. Now, this is a program that in a future video, I am also going to integrate with Siri and HomeKit. That way you can have this relay controlled not only via a button or some MQTT other device, but also through Apple's HomeKit. So you can attach lights or fans to this and have your lights or fans controlled through HomeKit. So that video will also be coming out in the future. I'm not exactly sure when quite yet, but keep an eye out. It should be coming fairly soon. All right. Well, that's all there is for this video. I hope you guys liked it. 
If you did like it, definitely go and give it a thumbs up down below. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, or you want to see how to build this module, definitely subscribe to the channel. Alright, well, that's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching.